Hi guys, my name is Greg and um, this is going to be my first video. I, I wanted to put it together and it's taking me a little bit of time to figure out how to do all the video editing software and all that. I, I still don't have it all down. Good, but I'm going to give it a shot and see how it goes. But there's some points and some things I want to bring up or, or show and see if maybe I can help some folks out that, that need to be awake because times are, are getting really really severe and you know if people don't see this stuff and they don't wake up then you know I, my heart goes out to a lot of these these folks that are stuck in the, the JW.org or the, the religion still and um, but I'm going to take Jesus' example and, and basically like when the disciples were talking to Jesus and they asked him about the end. And he said, do you know the beginning that you seek to know the end already? So what I'm going to do is, is kind of use a little bit of that guideline there to find out about the JW.org and see if maybe we can go back to their roots, which we always know. You go back to the roots, you find out a lot of information. And let's see what they've got to say about their beginnings. And maybe we can understand a little bit better where, you know, how this organization came about, how they're funded, how they how they work, you know, on the inside, whatever. But I think you're going to find some really good points that I'm going to show you. I'm going to bring out, there's going to be a little video here. It's an excerpt from the Faith in Action video. We're going to cover the... Um, the finished mystery book just just a few points out of it which is one of the the really praised books that that they they praise in this little short clip that I'm going to show you and and we're going to understand how they founded their their governing body and maybe this will give us all some insight into it and and maybe we can understand some things. So let's go ahead and get started with that. First, we're going to go to the video. And like I said, I'm going to pause it basically in a spot or two and, and kind of bring out some key points that I want you guys to, to see if you catch or pick up on that. And, you know, both me and my wife have, you know, seen this and, and it's pretty amazing. So let's look at this real quick. So here's the video and we're going to go right into it here. Give me a second. Notions of tranquility were shattered as nation after nation became enmeshed in the Great War. and other historical events matched what Jesus said would characterize the conclusion of the system of things. When World War I broke out in, in July, they felt vindicated and it strengthened their faith in the Bible and in Jehovah's prophetic word, but also it enhanced their trust that Jehovah was using Brother Russell and his friends to explain truth to others. Just looking at the sign of the times that Jesus told us to look at uh, is enough, but it's still significant that they could pinpoint that year. That's phenomenal. Brooklyn Bethel on October 2nd, 1914, Charles Russell made a monumental announcement. The Gentile times have ended, their kings have had their day. <laughs> Expectations were still running high. Many of the Bible students were hoping for an immediate heavenly reward. And now I just see my mother, she was ready to sell up everything in the home because she thought that the end was coming in 1940 and her feelings were that of a lot of the brothers back there. Despite such expectations, the distressing world conditions that erupted in 1914 would not mean that the Bible student's job was done. 
also felt sure that a great work remained. He wrote, We should lose no time dreaming that the door is shut. There are people who are seeking the truth. People who are sitting in darkness. The Watchtower, February 15, 1915. Yet Russell would not personally reach those people. In 1916, in the course of a preaching tour, he died at the age of 64. He had spent his entire fortune preaching the Bible's message. Whereas the majority of the Bible students kept studying the Bible and sharing its message, others simply could not overcome their disappointments. Disappointment that 1914 did not fulfill all their expectations, compounded by natural grief over Russell's death. Well, it was a big shock, because they were used to his taking the lead, and they figured he was going to take the lead until the Lord came and took them all to heaven, and uh, they just didn't know what to do for a while. They were, were, were totally shocked as to how to carry on. Some would sever all association with the Bible students, and attempt to draw others after them. What would happen to the Bible students? Would they disperse as if followers of Russell? This is not a work of man. This is a work of Jehovah God. It's evident that Jehovah had already chosen this organization. And because of the faithfulness and the sincerity of the men who were behind it, it's obvious that Jehovah had already chosen this organization to get his work done. You, you can't. This is... Okay, so you hear this right here. This is basically, this is what they're saying in this, this portion, is that God appointed these men to direct this organization. Now, that's a key point. I, I want you to hear this is this is straight, you know, from the horse's mouth. It, it's it's kind of it it's shocking. But anyway, we'll go in we'll go in a little bit further. Hold on, we're going to continue and and see what else he's got to say because you this is not all. Anyway, let's go. There were enough honest-hearted men, hungering for the truth, desirous of doing the will of God to prevent the organization from collapsing. Rather than giving in to disappointment over what did not happen in 1914, the Bible students kept their minds open to the significance of what had taken place. The World War and its aftermath had become the world-shaking events proclaimed by Russell almost 40 years earlier. Bible students were coming to the realization that Christ's presence began in 1914 and that the world's last days were underway. Two months after Russell's death, Joseph Rutherford was appointed to oversee the work. Rutherford had been a close associate of Russell, traveling with him and speaking in his defense. Like Russell, he believed that the good news had to be preached. He was dynamic and could not be intimidated. Yet not everyone appreciated these traits, even among the Bible students. Brother Rutherford, he was an entirely different personality. Brusque in manner, and uh, he didn't fear to tread on anyone's toes. I think this had a tremendous test on the brothers, because they were really worshipping the creature. 
only the Creator. <laughs> what if we do? So you heard right there what they thought of these men. Now these were just men, you know, and this, I want to bring out the book that you're, you're, you're fixing to see right here, which is called The Finished Mystery. Now this book, you're fixing to see, that they claim it's nothing now or, you know, old light, I guess, because they've shed new light on just about every publication that they've ever printed. So, but this one right here, I want you to understand because basically this book right here was the Kickstarter to the whole organization. This, there's a series of these books. Now, I want you to also notice if you look on it, you can see a winged disc. Um, kind of looks like it's an Egyptian symbol, so any, anyway, Free, Freemason symbol. But let, let's just go into a little bit further and see, because I want you to understand first how important they they felt this book was to them, and and how much that the organization or society wrote on this book and what it said at that time. And then we're going to delve into a little bit on what this book says. It's only just a, about a minute, a minute maybe of, of the video, so I'm going to continue on that. All right. Directed that Russell's notes for a seventh volume of studies in the scriptures be compiled into a new book called The Finished Mystery. On the day that the book was completed and he had a supply in his office, he arranged for the brothers to put one at each table place in the dining room. And so when the family came down to eat, each one had a copy of the book, The Finished Mystery. Some were quite curious about it, wondered what it was all about, and enthused about it. But there was already a growing tension in the family because some of the responsible brothers sort of resented Brother Rutherford. Some of them had ambitions for themselves. So they used the occasion to bring accusations against Brother Rutherford for having gone ahead and published this without their permission and their knowledge. And the result was eventually about a five-hour tirade against Brother Rutherford, where a number brought a lot of unjust accusations against him. Brother Macmillan tells that, well, that day they left the dining room and most of the food was uneaten and the family was very sad. But in the community at large, people were taking note of the finished mystery. They originally planned on a distribution of about less than 100,000, and uh, within a short time, over 850,000 copies had to be printed. So, you understand what we're dealing with now. You can see, you, you can see how important this book was to them, and and what what all started in this book. So, we've got Charles Day Russell that started the series. Then we have Rutherford that came in and basically finished the series. Now, what I want to do now is is basically let's go to actually JW.org. Uh, much as I don't want to use the site, I want to use it here because if they say it, and the only way I can I can basically it, with, with Jehovah's Witnesses, you have to go to their material sometimes, and and because they don't really want to see anything any other way, so that's what I'm going to do is we're going to go to that and we're going to see what we have here and all right. So who really is the faithful and discreet slave? Um, this is off of their website right here. I can provide the links below in the description, but we're going to go down to the domestic class. Well, first we can get that, but we'll go, we'll check out this. Who are the domestics? And I, I want you to get to, to get this. I'm going to read through this real quick. And it says, It is noteworthy that in Jesus' illustration, the faithful and discreet slave receives two different, uh, two distinct appointments. The first is over the domestics. The second is over all the master's belonging. So, when did Jesus appoint the faithful slave over his domestics? So what they say here is we need to go back to 1914, the beginning of the harvest. Now, as you notice, I want you to know that this book, basically the, the finished mystery was um, was printed, I think it was, there was the first edition of 19... 
14, some, something like that anyway. I think it basically hit in, in 1917, but let, let's go into a little bit more. As we learned earlier at the time, many groups claimed to be Christians. From which group would Jesus select and appoint the faithful slave? That question was answered after his father came and inspected the temple or spiritual arrangement of worship. From 1914 to the early part of 1919, it says they were pleased with a small band of loyal Bible students who showed that their heart was with Jehovah and his word. Of course they needed some cleaning, but they humbly responded during a brief period of testing and refining. So, let's understand this for a minute here. What they're saying is that Christ came in 1914. And of all the organizations, all the religions, he said, these guys right here, you know what, they're, they're teaching the truth, man. These are my people. And so this is what they say, that, that he chose them. He chose this organization as his people. That's a that's a pretty tough claim to make. To, and, and so if they say that they're not the only true religion, let's go back to that right there. And you can see exactly what it says. I mean, it's, it's right there in black and white. It says that he chose them from a small group. So, you know, okay. All right, so let's go into now what this finished ministry book actually talks about and discuss. So now let's keep in mind, if we want to know the beginning or the roots of something, let's see what was actually being printed or what was actually being said in this material. Because it's funny that, that the video that we just, we just covered, they praised the book, but they really didn't go into anything that the book said. So let's take a look at some of these things. All right. On page 178, you have the Great Tribulation started. On page 404, God's Day of Vengeance. There, there's some really crazy ones in here, but, but first I want to go to um, one here. Let's see. This little thing is really tricky down here to get this page to come down or scroll down, but all right. I'm going to skip that. I'm going to go straight into Because those technical difficulties. I want to go to... Um, okay, here we go. This is the finished ministry book itself. Let's go to what they said here as far as in Job. It says... that Job also describes the steam engine, a stationary railway and marine. This is, this, is, this is out of the book. Let me go back to the very first page here, and I'm gonna show you something. This is, this is the book, The Finished Ministry. Or finished mystery. I'm sorry, I keep saying mystery, but anyway. Alright, so we're gonna go back to that 87, page 87, and here it talks about um, here it talks about Okay, sorry about that. I had to actually scroll down on the notepad itself. Okay, so here we have um, on page 85, it says Job is saying that the Leviathan is a locomotive. Um, the valiant men of Nahum 2-3 are engineers and a fireman. The voice of heaven, the Revelation 18.4, is the voice of the Watchtower Society, page 276. We also have, let's see, 
team. That I love this one. Where is it? The uh, Michael, the Archangel. Michael the Archangel is the Pope of Rome. Page 188. Now you can download this the Spanish Mystery Book yourself. It's it's online. It's PDF. It's you know really old. So it's I think it's resource. It's 1918 edition. Okay. The rider on the white horse in Revelation 6-2 is the Bishop of Rome, the embryo Pope, the personal representative of Satan. Now, it, you know, the great pyramids of Egypt confirms the fact that the time of the harvest has come. There's another one in here that says, oh, uh, there's another one in here that says, um, Was that at these things sometimes they okay so what I'm gonna do here is jump to um, page 96 on the uh, finished ministry mystery sorry oh, she loves to correct me. so that's page 96 uh, the things a little messed up so anyway we're gonna go down to here and Nahum was the next one of the holy prophets and after prophesying in the last verse of the preceding chapter about the coming king with his good tidings, peace and sin burden earth, the next tells he next tells, he next tells an interesting thing that will be a matter of common everyday experiences. At the time the kingdom is established, he describes a railway train in motion, not an automobile, as some think. And if we be at trouble, but yet ourselves in the prophet's place, we can see just what he saw in his vision and what he has so interestingly described. First, the prophet stands looking at the engine coming toward him and then says, The shield, the thing of, head of, great, of this great warrior, the headlight is made red, shines brilliantly. The valiant men, the engineer, the firemen are dyed scarlet. When the flames from the firebox illuminate the... All right, I just can't read any more of this. This is this is kind of this is what I'm talking about. If we if you go to two two at page two eighty five, let's check that out. Let's see what it's got to say. Page two eighty five. We've had to come through here, and it's really I mean some of it you can't read, so it is kind of it is kind of hard to to get some of this. We got Revelation. Um, 18.4 and he says the voice of heaven is the voice of the watchtower. Let's hear this because so, this is kind of important um, as, as far as their claims. 18.4 and I heard another voice from heaven the watchtower and Bible Track Society the corporate body which Pastor Russell personally organized to, to conduct this harvest work. Folks I don't know how much crazier you got to be to understand that this is what they were teaching when supposedly Christ showed up and said, "This is my people," and they're teaching they're teaching good stuff. You know, just just what what is it you miss? But see, here's the you know, and I I feel sorry because a lot of them are told they not to look to this stuff. It's old light. That it's old light, and they keep getting new light and new light and. I mean, I just read it for yourselves. Look at, take a look at it. Let, take a look at, at what they've got to say. Let's go. Let's let's take again one last time and let's look at what the the Watchtower organization has to say um, themselves as far as what what basically true teachings. Okay. So this is JW.org. You can go to this. Take your stand for true worship. Now I encourage all Jehovah's Witnesses to absolutely take your own organization's advice on this. Take your stand for true worship. Suppose you found out that your whole neighborhood has been contaminated. Someone has secretly been dumping poisonous waste in the area. 
and now the situation is life-threatening, what would you do? No doubt you would move away unless you were a Jehovah's Witness. If you could, but after doing so, you would still face serious questions. Have I been poisoned? A similar situation arises with regard to false religion. The Bible teaches that such worship is contaminated with unclean teachings and practices. So, you know, you've got you've got Watchtower themselves themselves basically just putting a noose around their neck themselves. Nobody has to do it for them. It's already done and while they the, the, we're considered apostates, we're considered the bad because we're trying to help people understand if they don't listen to Jesus' teachings and they don't they want to listen to exactly what you know the the guy brother Barr said that this one of their members he said that and it's not a brother but, but not my brother but anyway <laughs> one of the organizations right. but um, what he said was it's creature worship they put these guys first above everything they they listen to them what they say or what they say. And they don't cover all the material that they print either. But you know that you know that in the beginning of the organization, according to the Watchtower themselves, they say that if he, you know, that that God came in this time and He appointed the ones that were preaching truth and 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 that were full of no falsehood. You know, we get things wrong, but you know, declaring a prophets talking about a, a train and and there's even there's even other crazier stuff in there they they calculate the distance from the printing press you know just take a look at it for yourselves guys see what you think um, leave your comments below you know if you've got any other pointers or something like that that, that you you find quite interesting in that let me know let me know what you find as well i'd love to hear from you guys well i appreciate your time and thank you for listening and check it out i hope you you know this helps some some people come to an accurate knowledge of god i really do because the time's drawing close to an end and you know if, if somebody don't wake these these people up and uh, I've got I've got some more videos I'm going to be putting out. Um, hopefully I can get to those sometime soon. This one was really really hard to to figure out how to get it all set up. But thank you guys for tuning in.